Can you uh, describe the competencies that you think are important to being a successful strategic counselor at a senior level? I think you first of all have to live in the big world. Um, you've got to bring your knowledge from whether it's World Economic Forum or your seat on a board of an uh, NGO or your senior relationships with media. So in a sense, bring the outside world in. Second, I think that um, some aspect of uh, bravery and integrity uh, is just so fundamental. Uh, too many are willing to kind of get along, go along, and senior people expect that kind of uh, counsel, and it may not jibe with what your direct client wants, but you need to speak your piece. If ultimately the client decides not to do it, so what? That's You've done your job. Um, and the third, I think, is that you must be able to bring in additional resource from others who have superior expertise in change or in CSR or in financial or whatever. Just don't try and arrogate all unto yourself. You can be the, you know, locus point of connection, but, um, you know, even after 32 years, I'm smart enough to realize that I'm good at certain things and, you know, self-actualized to realize enough that I'm not perfect at everything. And that's really important. Don't wall people out. Just on your second point, uh, the bravery point, Marilyn Laurie, who passed away yesterday, and we were just talking yeah. about our sadness about that, called it guts, having the guts to be willing to speak up and do the right thing. I think uh, Marilyn Laurie was an exemplary public relations person because I saw her not just at AT&T, but also when she was on the board uh, of trustees at Columbia. And she would sit with the president of the university and say, you know, Lee, I just don't think you're doing this right. And she didn't care whether she was one-on-one -on -one or in a group. Um, she spoke her mind as a true New York City born and bred gal she does. Uh, she was just right up there. And uh, all of us should aim to be as full of um, intelligence and integrity as she's been. And. You used the word bravery, which I think is a good choice because, um, unfortunately, I think we've all seen people who know they should be speaking up and out of some fear are just unwilling to, and they become not as valuable to, the, to their clients as, as they would be if they had the bravery or the guts, as Marilyn would call it, to speak up. Well, I think, Roger, some part of it is that um, uh, some element of Stockholm Syndrome sets in, mm -hmm. um, particularly yeah. if you're on the client right. side and right. you've been put into a box by the chief legal counsel or whatever, or by circumstance. Yeah. And that, again, is a very positive role that a firm can play, which is to provide an outside perspective and say, you know, um, this isn't right. Um, this isn't best practice. This isn't um, moving in the way that a leader should move. Um, you're expectation, Mr. CEO or Ms. CEO, is you're the biggest factor in the category. How can you not lead on this debate? You must. Is it, can't there also be that kind of fear or concern on the part of an agency? If you're leading an account, it's your first big account, and you know that they don't want to hear the advice they should be hearing, isn't there kind of a built-in concern about possibly losing that account and what happens to you when you have to go into Richard's office and explain why? Sure. Um, and I think that's where your culture at a firm plays a central role because you've got to not only encourage but incentivize um, that kind of appropriate um, pushiness or bravery, or however Marilyn would call it pushiness. <laughs> um, and I think it would be a shame if everything were down to, so what are your quarterly numbers? And I think we've all seen that, you know, some unfortunate PR firms have been hurt by their ownership structures and the extent to which they're either subordinate to advertising or they're simply seen as um, little uh, cash machines um, from which deposits will be, um, 
you know, taken out all the time. <laughs> and that's not the right way to run a business. So it is possible for an industry or even an individual company to build integrity through those things. I think so. Um, and it's also possible for a country. I mean, in the last two years, um, we've seen the reputation of the United States recover substantially. The Obama effect is real. Arguably, he's more popular X than in the United States. Um, what about um, the profession itself, public relations and its reputation? and this um, kind of disdain for spin and uh, disdain for public relations counseling in the broader media. How do you view that? Well, I think over time um, it's a really important um, problem for those of us in the business to address. And I think, you know, we've allowed ourselves to be categorized by um, movies like Wag the Dog, and we're this sort of shadowy force, um, the uh, sort of unaccountable, um, almost dirty tricksters um, with a sort of Washington heritage um, that people inherently don't like. And we have an obligation, I think, to point up um, our work as catalysts in creating and forging relationships between civil society and business, in helping to promote um, the um, you know, eco-imagination kinds of programs that a GE does. I mean, a Beth Comstock is, is a change agent for global business. She, on her own, with you know, the backing of her chairman and CEO, um, has made a major change. Leslie Dock, again, at Walmart, um, the same kind of profound change on business. Um, and we, as an industry, need to tell those stories um, because, you know, th they've had as much impact as, as any advertising or other executive in the last five years. Th there are people. Yes. And, and, we, and we, need to, we need to lay claim to those. Right. Um, and listen, frankly, it's harder for PR agencies to do that because you know, we always work for client. But, but the client should take the credit for that. Um, some of the work you did at Aetna um, was absolutely essential on, on financial literacy, on, on, on understanding, you know, your, your, your ability um, in, in health to, you know, speak back to your health care provider. I mean, again, you brought, but you brought wisdom from your prior life in, in, in Washington, so sensitivity to those sorts of things. Thank you for this conversation. As you think back on what we've talked about over the last hour or so, the trends in the industry, the learning that you've done, the learning that all of us need to do together to be better and more strategic, does anything kind of come to mind as an enduring truth or two that you think are relevant? The big message for me, Roger, is um, the more we explain what it is we do, better we'll be. I think way too much discussion happens um, in closed rooms and um, we have a tendency also to be very centrifugal in the PR industry. Um, so there's the Council of PR Firms and there's the Page Society and there's the uh, PRSA and, and there's Seminar and there's the Institute of PR and, and, and it's sort of, leo, you know, cacophony. At some point, I guess, I'd like there to be somehow more uh, tendency to be together as opposed to apart. Um, and I'd also like more people in the industry to stand up and speak out about what it is they're observing in the world. And not just on functional aspects like writing or, you know, social media, but on the big issues that matter, you know. Um, how are we going to achieve trust for business. We have a huge role in this, and we have to help our clients do this. And it's advice on strategy um, and being brave, as Marilyn Laurie would always say. Thank you. Thank you, pal. Okay. Good discussion? Yeah, excellent. Great. Perfect. Thank you very much.